Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to install OTR version 2 on Windows, on Mac OS, and also show you how to set up your contact output presets, which will improve your OTR workflow. To begin with, I've pulled up the Orchestral Template for Reaper website. It's www.orchestraltemplateforreaper.com. All you're going to do is click the download OTR now link in the top right hand corner. Um, once you download the software, um, depending on your operating system, I'm going to show you each approach. We're going to start with Windows. Um, to begin with, I'm going to just load up our downloads folder and you're going to see that there will be an OTR to zip file. Mine has already been extracted from the zip file. So I just have the folder right now. Um, so if I look at the OTR2 folder, inside of that, we have two additional folders and then a PDF. There is a Mac OS installation process and then Windows is super easy. All you do is drag the OTR folder wherever you want um, your application to be and just put it there. So I'm gonna drag it to the desktop. It is important to note that for some reason, there is an issue with whether it's Reaper itself or whether it's Windows. Uh, there's not supposed to be a file name limit, but there can be a folder plus file name limit, which somehow causes the application not to see everything it needs to see. Anyway, I won't go on about that. <laughs> Short version is put it where you want. If it doesn't seem to uh, function exactly right, uh, you've probably put it too many folders deep. If you want to be safe, just put it in, on your C drive or uh, as close to the top level directory as possible. Okay, so once you uh, have moved it where you want to, uh, double click on the folder. It is a self-contained portable install. This means that everything for OTR and Reaper is already at inside of this folder. Uh, we're gonna click on uh, Reaper. Now, in shooting this video, um, it prompted a minute ago a security uh, screen saying, would you like to allow this app to operate on Windows? Just click yes. Um, that's just one of the standard security procedures. Once everything has loaded up, you'll see it's gonna ask you for an audio device. Um, we're gonna go ahead and go to the preferences menu, which is under options, and then go to preferences. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure our audio device is set up so I'm going to click on the audio device, um, choose whichever one that you want to use for your DAW, and then we're gonna scroll down and choose our VST folder. So go ahead and select VST. Uh, you'll come in here and just make sure you locate uh, or put the locations of each of your plugin directories, and then hit rescan. Um, that will go ahead and get your plugins loaded and let you use them. If you have a Reaper license, uh, you can just drop the file inside of the OTR folder and it will automatically recognize it and you'll be good to go. So we'll go ahead and move over to the Mac side of things. Okay, on Mac OS, we're gonna follow a similar install process as we did for Windows. Um, we've already downloaded the file from orchestral template for reaper.com and I'm gonna go to my download folder and you will see that inside of the downloads folder, there was a folder called OTR2. Inside of that, we have a couple different folders. So if you want to follow the PDF guide, uh, you can click on that rather than watch the video, but this should be pretty easy. So the first thing we need to do uh, for Reaper on Mac OS is to create a portable install. In previous versions of OTR, I have provided an entire portable install file, depending on the operating system, depending on whether they had installed uh, Reaper before, the current version before, um, Sometimes the provided portable install file would work, sometimes it would not, and the user would have to create a new portable install. Long story short, we're just going to go ahead and uh, create a portable install of Reaper from the beginning for every user. That way it just works. So what we're going to do is we are going to drag our for portable install on Mac OS onto the desktop. Open that up. You'll see that there is a file called reaper.ini. And what we want to do is we want to go to Reaper's website, reaper.fm. We're going to download the latest version of Reaper. I've already done that, but we're going to download the latest version of Reaper. And we are going to open that up. And we're going to drag Reaper not into the applications folder. Uh, that would be a regular installation. We're going to drag it into this for portable install. So what's going to happen is when we click on the Reaper icon here, it's going to populate this folder with the portable installation files. So we're going to have to 
option click and hit open. And you will see, I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of the scanning of the plugins, but you'll see um, that the folder that we were in populated all of Reaper's default files. So that's a good thing. That's exactly what you want to see for a portable install. Otherwise, it would copy these files into a different place on your operating system. So Reaper's default installation is going to look something like this. Let me open it up. If you see this, this is the vanilla Reaper install. This is not OTR. So we're going to close out of that. Now what we need to do is this portable install folder. Uh, we need to fill it with all the OTR content. So we're going to open up this OTR folder and we're going to take all the different files and folders, highlight them, and drag them into this for portable install on Mac OS. And we're going to hit replace on all the different files. Perfect. So now when we launch Reaper, it's going to have all of the configuration files that have been pre-built. Um, it's going to go ahead and scan VSTs. I'm going to skip that for now. Uh, you will get security prompts as this goes along. Uh, the first time that you open up any of these files, Mac OS is going to say, hey, uh, what is this? And so you can say, uh, it says it can't be opened. Uh, what do you want to do? So what we need to do is we need to go to the system preferences and we need to go to security and privacy. And what you're going to see is that it's going to constantly add these files uh, to this list to ask you to whether you want to run it. Um, so when we hit cancel, you'll see it now says, would you like to allow this anyway? The file that it blocked from loading up was SWS, which is one of the extensions that you download for Reaper. So I'm going to go ahead and hit allow anyway. I'm going to, this next one that's asking uh, what to do is Reapack, which is another plugin for Reaper that allows you to download other people's uh, scripts and such. Uh, if you're not comfortable with these, please do your research, go to the websites. These are just very popular plugins that are used with Reaper. This is just the security steps that Mac OS requires. So we're going to hit cancel on this and it's going to say when you launch your SWS extension is missing. Um, that's because this process with the security and privacy, you're not clicking allow before Reaper loads. It's kind of like a, Hey, we're going to stop it from loading and then you can go back and let it happen. So we're going to go ahead and hit allow anyway. Um, that's going to have now allowed the, the two important plugins for Reaper to run on your system. And now we're going to hit OK. And we're going to close out a Reaper. And now we can come back into our portable install and click the Reaper icon. I'm going to again skip out of the plugin scan. Uh, it's going to prompt you again for additional files. And you say, Yes, I want to open this one more time. Open. And we have now gotten past the security and privacy blockade that Mac OS provides. Um, that's a good thing for people's security. It is just a little bit of a hassle to provide an all-in-one application from my side of things. If you were installing Reaper yourself, you would be prompted with uh, similar prompts when you install SWS and Reapack. It's just a thing. It's a Mac OS thing. Uh, so... Anyway, um, once you get that all downloaded and installed and you have said OK to the security and privacy, uh, this is what your screen should look like. You should now see all of the different menu tabs across the top. And from now on, when you update Reaper, you should just be able to download the Reaper files and uh, copy them into the um, OTR portable install directory. I hate that that's the process for installing OTR on Mac. But basically what you're getting is all of the configuration files that are on my system and those files are now made available to each user. Uh, so that is the installation on Mac OS. Now we're gonna move into getting contact uh, set up with the output presets. This next part is not required, but it is definitely recommended to improve your OTR workflow. Okay, inside of the portable install folder, you're going to see inside of your OTR folder an extras folder. We're going to click on that. Inside of the extras folder, there is a folder called contact output presets. 
open that up, you will see that there are presets for contact five and contact six. If you have a version later than 6.5.3, that's perfectly fine. You can use the 6.5.3 presets and it will work perfectly fine. So what we wanna do is we want contact to have these configuration files available when you launch it. So to do that, um, I'm going to open up another Finder window. Um, on Windows, you're just going to open up another Explorer window. And we're going to go to um, your user directory. We're going to go to uh, Library, Application Support, and then you're going to um, navigate down to Native Instruments. You're going to go to, if you are running Contact 5 and 6, you'll have to do this process for both. Um, but I'm just going to do this for contact six right here. So we're going to click on contact six. And then if you click on default, you now have this section that has your contact output presets. We're going to add these uh, contact output presets into this folder. So you just drag um, these guys into the output presets folder. I've already done this in my personal installation. So uh, for that sake, they're already copied here, but you will not see those otherwise. Uh, if you do not have an output section presets folder, just create one and uh, drop your output presets there. Now, what this will provide in contact is a way to um, route your audio out of contact in the OTR, but in a way that mirrors the OTR uh, track routing. So when we load up contact, which I'm doing right now, um, any of the instruments that you would normally load in here, it doesn't matter what it is, but what's going to happen is that inside of your uh, section uh, down here, the mixer section in contact, you can click the down arrow and you will now have in this list uh, the two output presets that we added, the 16 ounce version two, and we have the 16 ounce drum map. Uh, the drum map that's for another process right now. We're going to focus on the version two. When you click on that, it will change your um, whoops. It will change your um, output routing to what you see here. You will now have a mix, a close, a stage, a mid, a far, flex mic, V hall one, and V hall two, and four auxes. Um, all we're going to do is from this point, uh, once you've selected that version two, uh, we're going to. Choose Save Current Output Section State as default for all formats. And what this means is every time you load contact moving forward, it doesn't matter if you're in a DAW, if you are uh, you know, loading it as a standalone, your outputs are always going to look like this. So when you play an instrument, it's going to come through the main mixed channel. Just consider that as a stereo output, mixed one and two. For OTR, there are some other purposes. So for example, if we had routed this to if we had an orchestral instru instrument and we routed it to mid uh, when you play it it's going to come out the equivalent of channel seven and eight here through the mid and otr will know what to do with it that's that's the reason behind it again you don't have to do this um, but it will make the otr workflow a lot better if you have any questions uh, please email support at storyteller.im. I'll be happy to answer those questions. And thanks for watching.